To perform the operation, the patient is placed in a semi-beach chair position. Four portals are utilized for this procedure. A standard posterior portal, an anterolateral portal, an antero-inferior portal lateral to the conjoint tendon, and a coracoid portal just above the tip of the coracoid process. Viewing from posteriorly, a diagnostic arthroscopy is performed. Along the antero-inferior aspect of the glenoid, the deficient capsular labral complex can be identified. A radiofrequency ablation probe is inserted and the scarred capsule and labrum are removed from the anterior aspect of the glenoid neck. Abrasion is then performed of the anterior glenoid rim to facilitate healing. At this point, the rotator interval is removed and the base of the coracoid is visualized. The scope is then transitioned into the anterolateral portal and the conjoint tendon visualized. Soft tissue is debrided from the superior aspect of the coracoid and the pectoralis minor tendon is identified medially. Using the radio frequency ablation probe, the pectoralis minor tendon is removed from the medial aspect of the coracoid base. Once this is complete, the radio frequency ablation probe is used to bluntly dissect and separate the medial aspect of the conjoint tendon. Within this fat lies the brachial plexus. Next, a barrel burr is introduced via the anterolateral portal and an incomplete inferior osteotomy is performed at the base of the coracoid representing approximately 80% of the coracoid base thickness. The posterior portal and capsule are dilated to allow placement of the glenoid targeting guide. The glenoid targeting guide is placed across the anterior face of the glenoid hooking around the glenoid neck between 12 and 2 o'clock. A 3.2 millimeter drill bit is then placed through the targeting guide and subsequently exchanged for a cannula. The targeting guide is then removed from the shoulder. A second coracoid guide is introduced via the coracoid portal to grasp the coracoid perpendicular to its surface. Again, a 3.2 millimeter tunnel is drilled in the distal aspect of the coracoid one centimeter from its tip. A metal sleeve is inserted and the guide removed. A cortical button is shuttled from posterior to anterior through the glenoid and from inferior to superior through the coracoid process utilizing the previously drilled tunnels. A second cortical button is inserted on the strands exiting superiorly through the coracoid process. The coracoid button is pulled into place via the posterior portal sutures until secured on the superior aspect of the coracoid process. A standard bank heart repair is then performed, taking care to advance the inferior glenohumeral ligament in an effort to restore stability. An impactor is then placed superficially on the coracoid, and the coracoid is gently tapped inferomedially. Simultaneously, an assistant tightens the sutures posterior to the glenoid, pulling the coracoid inferiorly and medially. Care must be taken to avoid completing the coracoid osteotomy and causing a fracture. The tip of the coracoid should not impact the anterior glenoid neck nor the subscapularis. It is important to leave enough space for the subscapularis to mobilize underneath the coracoid. Once in the reduced position, the cortical button is secured in place. Skin is then closed in routine fashion and the patient placed into a simple sling. At six months postoperatively, the altered position of the coracoid can be visualized in its healed position.